Avusheni, grandchild. Welcome home. I know it looks different than you remember. We've... I... We've had some problems here at Voronga Savannah. <sighs> I've watched the sun rise and set over this park for 45 years. I've seen miracles of life, wonders of nature you would not believe. Our family's roots here run deeper than the oldest baobab tree in the park. But after 45 years, I'm humble enough to admit I can't be senior warden forever. Droughts, disease, and poachers are a constant threat. My team and I have protected and saved countless species over the years. But after a streak of bad luck, our elephants and all but one rhino are gone. If we lose more animals, the state could shut us down. See? I'm not about to hand the keys to my office to just anyone. I want to keep the role of senior warden in my tribe. Preferably my family. So, grandchild, here you are, standing in the bush. You can protect Vuronga. Save the animals who call this park home. Mend what has been broken. This will make our ancestors proud. Spiritually, physically, you're going to face the most difficult challenges of your life, but you can overcome them. I believe in your talent. I always have. Now, ready to prove Grandfather and Jabulo, right? Hello, everybody. We are back here on the Hunter Call of the Wild. And today we are back once again with the beginner series. As we get interrupted by that little uh, music burst that always happens here when you spot something for the first time in a day. But yeah, we're here on Verhonga Savannah for the beginner series. This will be our first ever attempt at hunting Verhonga Savannah in this particular series. And it's going to be quite a bit of fun. You guys have been requesting a video on Verhonga, so I figured that's what we would end up doing today. Now it's time to explore a little bit and figure out exactly what we're going to be doing. Just wanted to real quickly uh, kind of insert this into the beginning of the video as I did forget to show off my codex during this video and well, that is something that I've said I will do in every episode from now on if I remember it and I just happen to remember like halfway through recording so here we are this is going to be inserted somewhere into the uh, beginning of the video but we've got 327 kills at level 24 with two diamonds 80 golds 145 silver 27 bronze and zero great ones all the other stats are there visible as well if you want to see that we can go to the profile card and we are about a little bit more than a third way through level 24 and then we've also got a uh, level 7 in the perks and 6 in the skills as well as here is all of our uh, different scores for things so that is our stats and uh, yeah let's get back to the video and as always anytime that you enter a new map there is going to be outposts to unlock as well as lookout towers to grab so let's get a little bit of that done first and then we will kind of talk about what we're going to do today. So what we are going to be doing is hunting with a bow. I've had a lot of people requesting me to hunt with a bow. So we're going to kind of give you guys an introduction to bow hunting as well as our first hunt here on Verhonga Savannah. So I figured that would be a perfect way to introduce both of them and just in one episode to make it interesting. Now, honestly, you really don't need anything too fancy for bow hunting in the game. You will do perfectly fine just getting the bear claw, or I believe there's one other that you can get. Yeah, the razorback. Um, we're going to go with the razorback. Let's buy that real quickly. And to be honest, you just need the bow and some arrows. That's really it. You don't have to buy any of the special sights. You can just go with the single pin sight and it will do perfectly fine. So let's get a few of the 420 grain broadhead arrows. Let's go for like 30 of them and then I can't remember. No, we cannot get the 600 grain broadhead arrows yet. We could technically get them if we, if we wanted to, but this is a DLC item. However, I think for the sake of this video, we will go ahead and get a couple uh, packs of them so that we at least have the option to take down something like a Cape Buffalo or a lion with them. So it looks like our very first target of the day is going to be a blue wildebeest with the gold fur type. These are not considered a rare though they are an uncommon and they look absolutely beautiful. So we're going to stock up on this and try to take it down with the bow. 
And as we're doing that, let's go over some of the perks and skills that are going to be very valuable for bow hunting. One of them, of course, is going to be soft feet because it reduces the amount of uh, noise that you make. Another one that's really good is improvised blind. It'll make it so you can hide in bushes and completely conceal yourself so that if you want to use a collar, you can call the animal in and they will not see you until they get about 10 meters away, which is very, very beneficial for bow hunting. Another necessity is the zeroing skill because this makes it so that you only need the one pin sight. You don't have to buy any of the other sights if you have zeroing because you can just change the zero distance and you'll be able to smoke them from really anywhere that you want between 20 and 60 meters and you should be pretty accurate. If you're really, really into bow hunting, you could go into the bow hunting perks, but I've never really done them as they're not super useful i mean i guess the being able to go prone and still aim with your bow could be kind of cool but i found that most of these i don't really end up using even when i did have them uh, have them it didn't really make too much of a difference from what i've seen except for maybe move and shoot because this does uh, decrease wobble while moving for every single weapon but uh it, it's again not really a necessity Though I definitely do need to make it clear that I am not a bow hunter in Call of the Wild, so uh, anything that I say, take it with a grain of salt. There's definitely going to be some people that disagree with uh, the types of perks and skills and uh, things that I recommend for bow hunting as it's not the primary thing that I do here in the Hunter Call of the Wild, though I, I do know a decent bit about it just from playing the game a lot. Another thing I forgot to mention that is pretty vital is whenever you get the zeroing skill, be sure to activate it. You do have to click it again and then click activate and it will uh, activate the skill so that you can use it. That is something that you do need to take into account. I've had people uh, many times say that they got the perk and never were able to use it and that's typically why. One more thing that's going to be incredibly beneficial early on when you're trying to bow hunt at a low level is whenever you spot the animal, one thing you can do is immediately go prone after spotting it, open up your map, and then hover over where you ended up spotting it, and it will tell you the distance in the bottom right corner of the screen. This guy is about 50 meters away, so that means that we're probably going to, I would say, 0 for 60, and then aim slightly low. So let's see how this goes. That looked like a solid hit right there. And not gonna lie, with the new blood that uh, splashes off of the animals with the most recent update, it actually makes the bow hunting more satisfying. The way that that thing just got schlocked was amazing. That was actually really cool. And I, I don't think I've ever used the word schlocked before, but I've, it felt fitting in this scenario. Ooh, that is actually an even better blue wildebeest right there. How did I not notice that one? That actually is diamond potential. For those of you that do not know, that is the max weight estimate for the blue wildebeest. That guy's got a chance at being a diamond. Another one of the benefits to bow hunting is it barely creates any hunting pressure, so you can kill more animals in an area before deleting the zone. So it actually is pretty useful. If you find yourself in a situation where you want to take out a bunch of animals but don't have a stand, you can just use the bow and it will add barely any hunting pressure. Well, that's quite unfortunate to see. I don't know if we're going to be able to stock up as well as I would have liked. It definitely seems like it's going to be tough because the wind is shifting. Right as we're moving up closer, the wind is shifting directly towards them. Well, as they're all trying to jet away, let's claim this one right here. So we did manage to get a beautiful heart shot there. Actually, did we even hit the heart? No, we didn't. We got double lung, but it really should have been a hard shot, to be honest. We barely clipped it, it looks like, but it did not count that as a hard shot. It is what it is. I mean, that's totally just barely into it, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give it to him. It is what it is. Still a good shot. We got a, a beautiful wildebeest down, and that's about 866 cash, so they're honestly not terrible. There is definitely a really nice-looking wildebeest there. That actually might be a level 5 gold. We're going to have to get a better look at it before we'll know for sure, but it, it definitely seems like it might be. That would be a great way to start our hunt here on Verhonga Savannah. We're almost over to this next outpost, so we're going to walk over here. For those that are interested, it is just to the uh, east of the original starting outpost, just past this little lake. It's a uh, very good one to have as this lake is very popular for a lot of species. Well, now that we have unlocked this outpost, let's go ahead and change the time and see if we can get this wildebeest to come back. We shouldn't have to spend too much. Yeah, it's only 250 coins, so 
that should be a uh, perfectly fine I believe Let, let's check what their time is before I change it I want to make sure that we get the correct time six to nine so that means that seven should be fine we just need to reset the time so that they will hopefully come back to that lake well it appears that the blue wildebeest are back at the lake finally I had to spend a little bit of time roaming around uh, placing a tent down over here and then coming back here in order to get them to show up at their zone it seems like they were just very late but we can finally stock up on them and I did forget to mention one more thing I've decided that we're going to use the buck snort wheeze collar because it does attract the blue wildebeest and you actually get it when purchasing Verhonga Savannah you're also able to call in Sika whitetail lesser kudu and springbok with it so it is a very good collar to have on you if you like to bow hunt Normally, I don't use collars because my playstyle is typically with rifles, and in most cases, I don't end up needing the collars ever, so I typically don't use them. But for bow hunting, they are pretty much a necessity if you're trying to get a shot on a stubborn animal. And just like that, we've got the wildebeest coming in. The collars can be super, super effective. At getting them to move towards you but there's always gonna be a few that don't want to come to your call just like that one right there these ones over here may have heard it and started coming towards us but that doesn't mean that all of them will and in typical call of the wild fashion just when we thought that we were gonna sneak up on this group of wildebeest a hungry lion decides to come over and ruin everything for us that is how things go on Verhonga Savannah but uh, this is why it's one of the most popular maps in the game. There's a good variety of different animals and a lot of randomness as you never quite know what's going to happen. You know, today has been a pretty up and down day. We've been going for an hour already and I've killed one animal. And I feel like that is something that's important to note because I feel like in content creation and making videos like this, a lot of times we get caught up in posting all of the good trophies and the uh, moments where things go right that a lot of people forget that there's a lot of stuff that goes wrong in the hunter call of the wild as well and this is definitely one of those situations we've gone for an hour and killed one wildebeest I had our wildebeest scared off by us two or three different times and then just then we had a lion come through and spook everything right when we thought it was going well that is just a testament to how tough it can be sometimes in Call of the Wild. Everybody is going to have bad days in this game and it's good to try and do your best not to get discouraged when those bad days happen because it's one of those things that's inevitable. There is going to be bad days and good days in the Hunter Call of the Wild and depending on how you handle it will greatly affect how your enjoyment goes in the game. And sometimes when things just repeatedly don't go your way it's good to kind of switch your focus and that's what we're about to do right now. We have been trying to get wildebeest for the last hour and it's really not been working out. So why not take down the thing that spooked our last group of them? A beautiful level six lion. And that should be a dead lion. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we got him. <laughs> but that didn't go the way I thought it would. Not gonna lie, that, that might be one of the most dangerous things in the Hunter Call of the Wild. Bow hunting lions. Oh my gosh, that was not what I expected to have happen. That was crazy. That was absolutely crazy the way that just unfolded. And with that death right there, the uh, bad luck continues on the day, but just changing up what we were hunting at least made that an enjoyable moment and I had a, a lot of fun and a little bit of a laugh hunting down this lion right here and like I said sometimes that's all you need to do is just change your pace change what you're going for if you're having a bad day and sometimes it can turn it around we definitely still had a little bit of bad luck there but it was a lot more enjoyable to take down this lion and made for a pretty fun moment not to mention that if you are trying to level up early on in the game lions are an absurd amount of XP 406 this is more than any other animal in the game though they give about the same amount of money as red deer you definitely get way more XP if you're hunting for lions so they can be a phenomenal way to level up your character 
And speaking of level ups, I think I forgot to mention what we put our most recent level ups into. Uh, we got connect the dots here, which just makes it so that when you're looking at the tracks on your hunter mate or on your map, they'll be kind of like a line drawn between them if they are like in order. So it helps you know which direction the tracks are going and if you're on the correct uh, trail, if there's maybe older tracks and newer tracks from the same animal. And then for the perks, we went into body control in the shotgun category as we're working towards getting recoil management because this will be huge in making follow-up shots. You know, it's not been easy to sneak up on these lions and uh, with our focus kind of shifting towards them, that's a bit of a problem. But this day has really just been all types of back and forth in terms of animals not cooperating, uh, dying to the last lion and uh, now this one being very very stubborn and uh, I mean since we are hunting lions now I probably should talk a little bit about how you guys can find lions uh, whenever you're on Verhonga just go to the time of 12 and he ducked of course <laughs> this is just my luck today but as I was saying uh, just go to the time of 12 and then uh, hunt at pretty much any lake on Verhonga Savannah because they can be at virtually all of them and this is exactly why I say it is a necessity to get the improvised blind skill if you are going to be bow hunting, especially for species like lions that go up to level 9, as animals that go up to level 9 typically spook easier the higher the level. So yeah, that's uh, always been a major, a major uh, issue with hunting without this particular skill. So I definitely recommend trying to work up to it as quick as you can if you do plan on doing some bow hunting. Once again, another lion about to spook. Oh no, except this one's coming right at us. Oh, <laughs> I just can't catch a break today. I, I really just cannot catch a break. I don't know what I've done to deserve this, but it seems like Verhonga just doesn't want us to be able to uh, take down some lions. So yeah, that's, that's how today's gonna be it seems. You know, it's time that we include a new tool in our arsenal for uh, approaching this lion. The Predator Collar. And a ground blind. And of course, Mr. Lion's not interested. He's still just drinking. Of course. Well, that pretty much just even, even more sums up the entire day of hunting. Honestly, this is probably our last resort and best option besides what we just attempted. And that is using these very tall, thick reeds to kind of conceal us as this is the only way that you can fully conceal your character without having the improvised blind perk. As you can see in the bottom right, we are completely hidden. The little line that indicates how hidden you are is completely gone. If we move out of here, it returns. And this is, uh, this is really the only way that we can get that is in this super tall grass like this. Well, this might be one of the riskiest shots of the day. This guy is approximately 75 meters away, but he will not come to the call and this thick grass ends right here. So this is where we're going to have to take the shot. We're just going to wait for him to stand up and then try to launch an arrow. Okay, there we go. I actually shot an arrow next to him to try and get him to go alert and it worked and now he's actually coming to the caller. So things actually are working out better than I thought they would. Provided he can actually make it around the water. There is sometimes a bug where if you are um, kind of on the opposite side of water, the animal will not be able to make it to you, but I think it's actually going to go around this time. I think this is actually going to work out. Let's check how far it is. 55. So this is going to probably be about a 40 meter shot once he gets close enough. And in fact, this is probably good right here. Oh my gosh, we got him. I think we may have just got a hard shot there. That's got to be the best shot that we have made all day. Something finally worked out for us. And I think that right there is going to bring an end to this episode as we have had such a tough time today just getting anything done. I want to end it on a high note and that right there is about as good of a kill as we could have asked for. Not a giant lion. But still, we made a solid hard shot on it, and that's really all you can ask for in that situation. But I hope you guys enjoyed watching me uh, suffer through bow hunting on Verhonga Savannah with uh, minimal perks and stuff. 
It was interesting, I'll give it that. Definitely did not accomplish as much as I was hoping to, but we can always do that in future episodes. It was nice to finally get out onto this map and have a little bit of fun, a little bit more of a relaxed episode on something that we haven't done yet, even though it didn't really go our way. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to hit like as it does greatly increase the chances of other people seeing this video and it is massively helpful to the channel. So if you enjoy the content, be sure to hit like. It's a huge help. But with that being said, thank you all for being here and I will see you all in the next one. Peace.